Growing up, and honestly still to this day, the Nintendo DS was always one of my all-time favorite consoles. The Nintendo DS Lite was actually my very first handheld console I ever bought with my own money when I was a tiny little child and my first console ever that was fully mine. Over the years, my love for the console just kept growing and I would buy every single one I could get, sort of. <laughs> this brings me to today with a collection that's pretty decent and pretty big in my opinion. If you're new here, hi, my name's Jess, aka Likavi, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a DS collection, all the consoles and games that I have so far. And I decided to separate the DS and the 3DS because I have pretty big collections for those and I did not want the video to be an hour long. <laughs> I decided to separate them because I have like over 50 games just for the DS and I have way more for the 3DS, so... Or maybe I have something similar. But still, it was way too many to put in one video, especially with the amount of consoles I have for the 3DS systems. To start it off with the very first DS console I ever got, I'm starting this off with my dear friend, the DS Lite. So this is the first console I ever got. It's a little bit beat up, obviously. I was a tiny child when I first got this one. It does not have the original pencil anymore. It's now a purple one. It is a little purple pencil that I have for this one because as you keep playing they do get damaged and then don't really work anymore or end up damaging your screen if you damage them too much. Hi! It's going to become a routine for you to appear in these videos apparently. Vas-y, va te coucher! I finally got her to lay down. So yes, this is the first console I ever got. I do have to say, I'm pretty sure it's the R that started to work a little less. And this is the screen. Honestly, it's not that bad for a console that I've played for a long time. It has a few dents and everything. And yes, the screen at the bottom got very used, especially for Mario Party DS, but it still works and it is my pride and joy because it was my very first DS console, so I love it, and this is my first one. Now as I grew and my love for the console grew, they started coming out with new consoles because this one wasn't the very first DS, this one was the second one if I recall. The very first DS is really just called that, the DS. That one is the DS Lite, which is the second one. I do not have the first one, it came out when I was a bit too young. And then they came out with this one, the DSi, my absolute joy. <laughs> the DSi was the first one that they ever implemented a camera on it. And if I'm being honest, it has to be one of my favorite colors they've ever come out with for a console because it's such a pretty blue. I absolutely love it. And there is a little Winnie the Pooh on it because my dad gave me a few cents for a little gumball thing, but it was like little toys inside. And this is the one I got, and I had my console with me, and it's stayed on there ever since then. I probably took it off a few times just to re-put it back, but there hasn't been a day where it wasn't on it, so it's a little souvenir. This one still has the original pen, I'm pretty sure at least. No, I don't think so. Yes, I think so. I do not know anymore, but <laughs> it's supposed to be, I think. I don't recall. It's very discolored, as you can probably see right here. It honestly needs dusting because you can still see my fingerprints, but this is what the inside looks like. So it looks pretty awesome in my opinion. So this was my DSi. And one thing I had told myself is that I did not want to get the XL versions of consoles. This later changed in the 3DS era. I do not have a DSi XL now. I do. Now I want one. And I may or may not try to get one one day and do an unboxing for you guys. But so far I haven't found one. I do want a DSi XL because this baby was absolutely amazing, especially with the iconic little Winnie the Pooh from my childhood. Next up, I did end up getting a new DSi, but it was actually not brand new. So the story for this one is I was on Marketplace and I saw a listing for a DS and a DSi. I ended up missing out on the DS one, but the DSi was $25 Canadian and it came with like two games? the charger and the console, which does still work. I did test it out, so it is red. Not usually the color I would go for. Most of my consoles are blue, the color I love. It did not come with a pencil. I call them pencils, but they're stylus. Oh my gosh, forget about that. <laughs> the only thing is they don't really stick. 
it's too damaged inside of this little slot so it doesn't really stay but that's okay I really don't mind the console does still work so if ever my my DSi my blue one would like break or something I have extra pieces now and this is the inside so it's in pretty good condition for being just $25 with two games and the charger and yes so this is my third console. Altogether, I have these to play my DS games. And obviously they do still work with the 3DS systems. Now to go into accessories, I only have two cases because I don't have one for the DSi yet. I do want to try to find one. But the one that I've been using for years now for my DSi is this one with Peach and Daisy. I've been using it for so long. I don't think it's focusing. I think it's focusing on my forehead. This is the one that I've been using and there is these little elastics to put it in and then there's room for three games and I do have two in there already. I took out the third one because I do need to show it to you guys later but this is the case that I've been using for my DSi in blue and then this one is an iconic one in my opinion. This one is one of the OG DSi cases I'm pretty sure. My brother had a red one I have the blue one because my brother is my brother's actually the one that inspired me to get the first DS because he got the he was the first one between us to get a DS light and he got the red one and like a couple weeks later I got my blue one because I did not realize there was any other video game style things and then I saw him play it and I was like I need one so I got one and I'm pretty sure he had the exact same case but in red and you just put the console there in other words you can still play it in the case which is so advanced for its time. <laughs> And then a little zip here where you could put extra games or styluses. To finish off the accessories, I do have the DSi charger as well as the DS Lite charger. Now to go into the massive portion of this video, which is going to be games, I have over 50 games to show you guys. So I'm not going to spend too long talking about each because there's just way too many to do that for. I kind of put them in categories, but also not really because some of them are not in categories. So the first category I'll go for is this little pile and the first one on that pile is Naruto Chibudan Ninja Council 4. Now this one was a game that my brother had and not me. A lot of these games, um, well not that many, but there are some games that I'll mention that they were actually my brother's first and I ended up like kind of inheriting them because he didn't want them anymore. He destroyed his DS and he didn't stick to that. He went into other home consoles instead and I stuck with handheld consoles. So this was one that my brother had for himself until I got it. Next up, this game was seriously one of those games that I played so much when I was a kid and it is Star Wars The Clone Wars. Now this one was mine because my brother was never into Star Wars. Now this next one was also my brother's and it is Bakugan Battle Brawlers but I did play it and I do love it. Also once belonged to my brother, Chaotic Shadow Warriors. We also used to play the card game, as well as like Yu-Gi-Oh and Bakugan. We used to play all of them <laughs> and we both, both loved it. I remember my card set case was blue, like the blue device, and then my brother's was red. We just always stuck with those because those are our favorite colors. This next one was also my brother's but quickly became mine because I was the one that was very into Ben 10. He was also very into Ben 10, but I kind of like stuck with it for a long time. So this one is Ben 10 Protector of Earth. If I'm being honest, I still love Ben 10, especially Alien Force and Ultimate Alien. I love those ones. The art style for Omniverse was not as much my cup of tea. I preferred the Alien Force art style, but I did really love Ben 10 growing up and so did my brother, which is where this one that was my brother's came from. and then. I ended up getting Ben 10 Alien Force, which I absolutely loved playing and my brother did also play it. So we kind of like switched so we could both play them. Now that was pile one and now to go into pile two. Now these ones are kind of like my Mario games, not Mario games. In other words, they're Mario characters from like the Super Mario series, but like not Mario games. And the first one on this list is Yoshi's Island DS which I actually got, and I'm pretty sure got broken. Yeah, yes, so it got broken in the mail when I got it because this one was a little bit more of a recent purchase, but it, get, it did get destroyed in the mail, unfortunately. <laughs> this next one is Super Princess Peach, and I do know that lots of people, I've seen lots of people talk about it and how 
They thought it was controversial because Peach's powers were powered up by her emotions. And then I also saw some people coming out like, I loved that game because it showed me that my emotions like could be a powerful thing. And then others that were like, that's too stereotypical. I don't know where I stand on this one. Let me know where you guys stand for this game. I do know that it was a little bit controversial. So they never did remake another solo Princess Peach game. I'll do say that I did like that she was saving Mario for once. Last one out of this tiny pile is Diddy Kong Racing DS, which I did not even know there was a Diddy Kong Racing until last year when I bought it for like maybe 15 bucks. And I thought that was amazing because I love the Mario Kart games. It's definitely different, but still very, very fun. And I love that this time it was Diddy Kong that was kind of the star of his own game. That was pile two. Now for pile three. This one was my absolute childhood. This next pile is my littlest pet shop pile. <laughs> First up, I have littlest pet shop winter. I used to play this game all the time. And I do know that my brother did also end up playing a lot of my pet shop games because like we always shared our games, but also we didn't, we would fight over them, but he also loved playing my games and that was fine and I love playing his so that was fine but we also it was like sometimes we were okay with it sometimes we were not and actually it was really fun because I got to have somebody that loved to play them as well because they were it's animals who doesn't like like animal games <laughs> then I have little pet shop spring it's the same thing as little pet shop winter and I'm pretty sure if there's spring and winter there was summer and autumn or fall this one is spring and then I have Littlest Pet Shop Friends Country. This one was so, so fun. I really love that one. And I'm pretty sure all the Littlest Pet Shop games had counterparts. I just don't remember what this one's counterpart is. Kind of like the Pokemon games. They all had their counterparts. The Pet Shop games also had their counterparts. This one, I do have the counterpart. I think there was more than two usually. Or some, maybe there was sometimes just two. And this one is Littlest Pet Shop 3 Biggest Stars Team Pink. But then I also have Littlest Pet Shop Biggest Stars Team Purple. I don't know if there was a Team Blue. Might have been just these two. They were both really fun and I do love that- it, I think I asked for one for Christmas and I got it. And then so my brother would play one and I would play the other. And it was just kind of really fun. There was five Pet Shop games. I was obsessed. <laughs> Next up, some of these were my mom and I's favorites when, when I was younger. We would play them all the time and I think we want to play them again soon because it just was so much fun and the Switch one is really not that fun. So they are the Cooking Mama games. So the first one that I have on my pile is Cooking Mama 1. Super fun, but the one we played the most was Cooking Mama 2 Dinner with Friends. And then Cooking Mama 3 Shop and Shop was actually a recent buy and I re a recent add-on to my collection. And I did get my mom her very own at Christmas because I did get her her very own 3DS console with a whole bunch of games for her to enjoy. To go with the Cooking Mama games, I also have Gardening Mama. It was very different and it is a little bit trickier than Cooking Mama, that's for sure. I'm looking at all the games in front of me and there's still so, so many to go through. It's actually a little scary. I'll go through this pile of random games next. So the first one is the Kung Zhu game. No idea what it's about. I've actually never played it. The only reason I bought it was because if any of my fellow Canadians are watching this, you all know what Dollarama is. For those who don't know, it's a dollar store. So back in the day, it used to be an actual dollar store. Now it goes up to $4. And I think I heard sad news that it was going up to $5 maximum, which is heartbreaking. <laughs> Inflation! I did get this one in the dollar store for like a couple bucks. Can you imagine finding a DS game for like two dollars at the dollar store? I was amazed. I bought it. I do not know what it's about, but still I thought it was brilliant. <laughs> Next up, another thing I was obsessed with as a child, the Moshi Monsters Mooshling Zoo. I'm pretty sure I have a Moshi Monsters 3DS game as well because I was in a Moshi Monster phase when I was little and this is not any um, different. It was very, very fun. I'm looking at the back and it's actually making me want to replay the game a little bit. 
It was so, so fun. I used to know them all, now I don't. I also did collect the cards when I was younger. I used to be so into card games. I'm pretty sure there were... I used to collect the Naruto card games as well. And I'm pretty sure that, yeah, there were Ben 10 card games as well that I would collect. Some of them might have not have been games, but yes, I collected a lot. This next one, I have no idea what it's about because I, it's one of those games that I got with the DS that I bought for $25. And it is Smart Girls Playhouse. This is the game one of two for the red DSi. I'll show you guys the other one really soon. This next pile is my TV show turned into a game pile. You'll see why. <laughs> First up, I have The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, Circle of Spies. This one used to belong to my brother. It quickly became mine before he even gave me his DS because it was just so much fun. Truly, some of these TV shows turned into games were actually absolutely amazing. All of these that I have on here, except for one, were they were just so much fun and I can't get over how good they were for being a game made from a TV show. It was brilliant. <laughs> Next up, probably my favorite out of this little pile, Wizards of Waverly Place. And I heard that there was another one that I did not know about and I need to get it. This one, the amount of hours I put into this game is absolutely insane. I played it so many times from beginning to end. So, so much fun and finding out that there's another one, I'm going to need to find it and add it to this little collection. <laughs> Next up, another one that I absolutely loved, Hannah Montana. I actually have it in this little slipcover. It is such a good game too. I absolutely loved it. I was so into Hannah Montana when I was younger. I'm assuming a lot of people were. It was so much fun and I remember getting this game. And I was so happy and I another one that I put a lot of hours not as much as Wizard of Waverly Place but definitely a lot and the last game turned into TV show no TV show turned into game actually is the second one I got with the DSi and it is iCarly have not played it because well I just got the DSi not that long ago but this is one of my newer additions to my collection. This next pile, once again, is another more so random pile. Had a theme until I put this one in, which was a gag game. I've never played it. It's Eminem's Break'em. And I only bought it because it was five bucks on eBay and I thought it was hilarious because Eminem's are one of my favorite chocolates. <laughs> but I do not know what this game's about. For five bucks, it was hard to say no. Apart from that one, the rest of these games are more like animal games. So the first one I have is Paws and Claws Pet Resort. Then I have World of Zoo. I just dropped a game. This is the other one I have. And then the last one, Nintendogs. We all know Nintendogs. Majority of people know Nintendogs. It is the Dalmatian one because I used to have a little Dalmatian. It's they're just so much fun. For some reason, taking care of a dog, a DS dog, was just the light of a lot of us as childhoods. <laughs> These next two games are games that my brother used to own, so one of them is called ATV Thunder Ridge Raiders, and it's a two-game pack. Wait, I just saw that. Monster Trucks Mayhem is with it, on it. This is what it looks like, and then the last one is MX vs. ATV Untamed, which looks like this. I remember my brother loving those games so so much and I love that I have them in my collection now and at one point I do plan to at least play them just a little to see just what they were about and why he loved them so much. Next pile, plus one because I just put that one in there for some reason I didn't notice is Professor Layton and the Curious Village. And then I also have Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box. And I think I remember saying in my video games haul video that I was waiting on another um, Professor Layton game that I got off of eBay. And it's been, sorry, it's been months now. It has officially just been slipped off of my mind. It wasn't too expensive, so I'm not too sad about losing it. But um, it did get lost in the mail and I will have to repurchase it at one point. I don't want to right now, but I have two out of the three on DS even though I was waiting on that last one, but it's okay. And then I also have Rune Factory, the first one. There's still 
quite a lot to go through and I'm going as fast as I can, but <laughs> we're almost there. <laughs> This next pile is my game show pile, or just game style pile, um, games. So first one is the carnival games. I'm pretty sure this one was my first DS game, like ever. And it was, it was really fun. My mom loved it because I used to let her have my DS light and bring it to work so she could play on it on her um, lunch break. We were truly a little gamer family. <laughs> And she loved that one. She loved other games as well, which I'll be going through. And then I also, this one was more of a recent purchase, have Monopoly, which I also got for my mom for Christmas. I'm hoping it's good, but it might look, it's, it looks like there's just one board, which is okay. But I don't think any Monopoly game will ever beat the Wii Monopoly game. There's just, no Monopoly game can top that. Like, the Switch one sucks compared to that one. I mean, it sucks compared to any one so far, in my opinion. I just don't like it. <laughs> next up, if I'm being honest, these next two games are actually my mom's. <laughs> um, first one is The Price is Right. And next up is Deal or No Deal, and I'm pretty sure they're my mom's. Because I for sure didn't buy them. My brother didn't buy them. I think these ones actually not part of my collection. <laughs> and then the last one is Wipeout, which was actually very fun. Surprisingly, I loved it. It was fun. <laughs> We're nearing the finish line. There's still over 10 games. Don't know how many, but over 10 games for sure. So the next one I want to show is the only Pokemon game out of this entire collection, and it is Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Time. It was actually my brother's. This is, I think, the last one out of this whole collection that belonged to my brother. And it's because I, when I was a little younger, did not know what Pokemon was and wasn't into it. I started getting into Pokemon. Well, no, I knew what Pokemon was because of the GameCube, but I was into it as much as I was when I started the 3DS. That's when I started getting into Pokemon more and also the Wii seeing my brother play it. but. On the DS's lifetime, I just didn't really care, actually. I just, for some reason, didn't really care. My brother did, so he had this one, and now it's mine, and I've played it, and I do love it. I kind of regret not being into Pokemon. But the games I was most into were the Mario games. Next up, I have the Simpsons game. If any of you know what the Simpsons game is, my goodness, it was amazing. It was so amazing. Especially on the PlayStation 2. It was so much better than the Wii one on the PlayStation 2. And then the DS one is kind of like an abridged version a little bit. It's definitely not the exact same because the DS can't do what the PlayStation 2 or the Wii could do. I remember watching my brother play it. It was so much fun. And then I did get it for the DS. And then I also have Garfield's Fun Fest. Which my brother played. It was mine, but my brother played. And it was so much fun. It was genuinely so much fun. Garfield was always something my brother and I loved. We both had lots of the comics, and so this one was just a game that we immediately loved because it was Garfield. <laughs> the last one in this little pile of I don't know what it was, was Monster High Ghoul Spirit. Another one with a little slip cover, and I loved, love, loved this game. It was so much fun, just like Wizards of Waverly Place, one of my most played games, uh, other than the um, massive pile of Mario games that I own. This one, outside of those Mario games, is also one that I played quite a lot. I was so into Monster High when I was a kid, it's absolutely insane. I kind of still like, <laughs> as stupid as it sounds, watching the movies once in a while because some of my nieces are into that, and just reminisces a little. Next up, I have the first no, I don't think this was the first Animal Crossing game. <laughs> what am I saying? I have Animal Crossing Wild World. I think the first one was on the GameCube, not the DS. I have Wild World. I didn't get it when I was a kid. I did get it more recently because I've been getting into Animal Crossing more and I didn't play when I was a kid, but I'm excited to play this one. I haven't started it yet. It'll be good to go back into the older Animal Crossing games and see what they were about. We're now... <laughs> I'm trying to like put them in some sort of order. We're now into my Mario games. And so let's just go through them because there's a lot. 
First up, I have Mario Hoops 3 on 3. It's a basketball Mario game, which I thought was pretty dang awesome, and I love that I have it in my collection. It's not one that goes for that much though, so it's not hard to get, I think. I don't think it goes for that much. Next up, after Mario Party 7, or maybe at the same level, one of my all-time favorite Mario Party games, Mario Party DS. It's so, so hard to beat. It is such a fun game. I absolutely love it. It is so much fun. My mom and I used to play this one all the time, as well as with my brother. I would have my friends play with me for that one. It was just so much fun. Favorite map definitely has to be the Donkey Kong map. I absolutely love that one. The piano one was also really good. I just love the idea that they were now super, super tiny as well. They got like zapped and they became tiny. I love that. <laughs> Next up, I have my Super Mario 64 game cases. So I have two. This one is my original one, the first one I ever got. The reason I know that is because I'll show you this one has the recycled sticker. So the reason I actually have two is because my heart broke on a certain day and my dog, I think I left it, I left it at like dog's reach, which was so horrible, but I was such a little child. I, but this, this is what happened. It is destroyed, it is no longer playable, it got beat up severely, but I loved it so much, so so much, it was so much fun, it, I actually cried when it, when it broke, I cried so hard, it was painful, and my mom and I, as well as my brother and dad, went on vacation at one point, we went to EB Games, because it was called that when we were kids, and my mom saw one for... Not that much, but I thought the price was going to be on it, but it wasn't. And it was a recycled one. Somebody else had already played it, but that was okay. And she bought me a new one. Because I think secretly she also wanted it back, because she used to play the mini games on it a lot. So this was the one she got me. It's the exact same thing, except the cartridge wasn't chewed. So that was good. And no, it hasn't gotten chewed or any of my other games ever again. That was a lesson learned very, very well. <laughs> Next up, I have Mario vs. Donkey Kong Mini Land Mayhem. This one. And then I also have Mario vs. Donkey Kong 2 March of the Minis, which is this one. So I have both of them. I was showing it. And they're both really fun. The Mario vs. Donkey Kong games were honestly brilliant, and I love them. I think they didn't get as much recognition as they honestly deserved back when I was younger because not a lot of people knew about them that I knew like because the DS is like every kid had one not a lot of people had these but it was still very fun and I still love them next up I have new Super Mario Bros another one that I absolutely loved I'm feeling it did I lose I lost the manual for this game um oh well so this is new Super Mario Bros and then I have obviously Everyone that has a Nintendo console probably has this game. Mario Kart DS. There's a Mario Kart for every system, and I get them for every system. <laughs> and now these last two Mario games, Mario and Luigi, Bowser's Inside Story. Oh, the raging I had when I was younger playing this game. It was horrendous. I think it was during the final battle. I was <laughs> it was horrible. And then you had to put your console sideways and then do battle sideways. It was not the greatest thing. At times I would, oh, the rage I felt at times because I couldn't do it. I ended up beating the game like a couple times, but it was so hard. And then the final game on this whole Mario list is Mario and Luigi Partners in Time. This one I loved. It has baby Mario and baby Luigi, which I have the plushies up there and it was so much fun. It was one of the darker ones. Like, can, just looking at the cover art, can you see Princess Peach? It's a bit of a darker game. Like, seriously, a, a, a bit of a darker game. <laughs> but the Mario and Luigi games are honestly so amazing. Love them all so, so much. I am finally down to the very last two games, which I was actually gonna forget about. Before I started the Mario ones, I realized that I was forgetting these two. Um, 
for some reason because they're not I don't place them at the same spot I place my other games I place them somewhere else it's kind of like a shrine at this point the two games if some of you may guess are the Legend of Zelda DS games first up the Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass second up Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks both of these games for some reason I wasn't forgetting I had them, I was straight up looking at them at times, but it's because I have this like little little corner on my shelf that has some of my Legend of Zelda stuff and I put them there because I wanted to keep them separate from my other games to make sure they were fully safe because they are not easy to get. That, those ones, I do have others that aren't easy to get. They're in the same art style as Wind Waker, they're actually the continuations and I absolutely love them. These are some of my pride and joy, my little babies from my collection as well as I would say probably this one because this one is also very hard to get. It's definitely not an easy one to get. But these ones are definitely little babies in my collection. Um, I love them which is also why I keep them at a separate spot. <laughs> I absolutely love those ones and all in all I'm looking at all the games like spread out around me and I'm finally done. I'm finally done showing all the games. I've been recording for so long so I can't even imagine doing the 3DS combined. It would be excruciatingly painful for me to film and edit and for you guys to watch. it would be so long. So I'm kind of glad I decided to separate them because I've been filming for so long. The video should be shrinked pretty well, but still. <laughs> all in all, those are all the games that are in my collection, except maybe these two that actually do not belong to me. Sorry, mother. <laughs> if there are any games that you've realized that I don't own and that you guys do, that I should add to my collection, please let me know in the comments. And also your favorite DS game, if you have one or if you have a list, like a top five or a top 10 of your favorite DS games. I would love to know everybody's different little tastes. All in all, that was all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya!